Hello guys and welcome to another video of Tech and Picks and before we actually get into it I just want to remind you to visit my website techandpicks.com It is your one-stop shop for everything photography and technology related don't forget to visit my social media links also. As usual, do not forget to like and subscribe this video and share it on your social medias. Now let's just get right into it. What are we looking at here? Now, Lightroom has also the power to merge different pictures together. I found out of a method called the Brennizier, 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 Brennizier method, where basically you take multiple shots, so many pictures of the same area, and here I will show you the single shots. This is one, two, three, and just slightly going left, right, up, and down when you take the shots and you can merge them all together and the system calculates the best possible outcome. How do you do that? You select all of the pictures down here by holding shift and highlighting all the pictures. You click on the right key on your mouse and you go into photo merge and panorama. Once the system puts the pictures together, you can choose whatever option looks best to you. You click on OK and then the system creates a one file where you can see there are like weird squares here like that. These are basically the areas of all the pictures put together, the, the computer calculated which pictures by smashing them all together, what would look best and it eliminated areas, it cut out areas that did not look good and it left in areas that actually looked good and matched as much as possible. What does this create? This creates a very large picture. So this file is very large. It, 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 is, it is an accumulation of uh, 10, I would say about, yeah, 10, uh, 11, 24 megapixel pictures. So this whole file here, this is a really big file, so it might also slow down your computer and possibly this video. Now, I wanted to take this picture. I am really far away and it's being and this picture was taken with a very old Vivitar Vivitar 200 millimeter prime lens. And I took multiple pictures up, down, left, and right, as you saw before, and I merged them all together. What is the purpose? Is to get an extreme sense of a depth of field. And because I love depth of field, I love to make the pictures 3D. This is one of the ways that you can actually do this and make it look really, really nice. Now here at the very, very front, this is out of focus. But the focus then goes in to where this lady is standing right there with her dogs. And there's actually a, a rabbit there or a hare it was also there. I didn't even notice at the time I was taking the picture. And it blurs back into the background. So you have blurry, blurry in the forefront here. Then slowly goes down to the subject, which is the lady walking here with her dogs and blurring back into the background. And we're going to bring out everything in this picture from the colors. We're going to even blur even more the background by using very simple techniques and let's just jump right into it. So the first thing we want to do is we want to crop out, we want to crop out all the bad bits. Okay, I don't like to look at the, 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 the white areas here. I'm sure you also don't. So we're just going to cut those out and we're going to try and make it work for us as much as possible. Now we don't have, what I, what I want to do is I could easily take this picture up to here, but then it would just be a, just your regular, like a regular panoramic shot and I can make it really longer like that. And it'll give you a 16 by 19, it'll be centered, it won't really look that well. But what I want to do is I want to preserve this part here because this part here gives it a sense of depth so i want to keep that i'm going to keep that and i want to crop out everything else so i'm going to lose this area here i'm going to lose this bottom corner here not a problem let us take a look that looks fantastic you can just see a little bit of the corner there They get rid of it. Yep, that looks good. That has gotten rid of it. And there is the final visualization of the picture. Now, the thing is, uh, I, I'm the picture is... Uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go back into the crop and I'm just... I'm, I'm going to 
bring it over. I'm just going to bring it over a little bit, get it a little bit more centralized, but I don't want to keep it directly in the center, a little bit off to the left, just enough to, you know, create the atmosphere. Now we can get to work on our picture. The first thing we want to do is we want to work with the exposure and make it just a few just a few clicks brighter. We want contrast because contrast really brings out the sense of depth in this picture and just makes the overall picture look really, really good. Then we get into the highlight shadows, the highlights and the shadows here. Now the highlights is mostly for the background, so it really brings out those the, the sky and everything that is uh, in, in, a, in a lighter color. I always like to put my highlights all the way down because it it, it really accentu accentuates whatever is in the sky. If you come up to here, you see the sky is blown out completely and, you know, the picture is overall brighter and not so much contrast, a little bit washed out in the middle. So we're just going to bring this down and give it more of a punchy, contrasty look in the middle here and just bring out the, the line that's back there where the mountains are. Now, the thing with the shadows, the shadows, of course, brightens up all the darker areas here and the shadows that are here and the shadows here. It, it brightens up. It, it does exactly what it's called. It's shadows. Now you can see everything that was shadowed here is much brighter, much more detail. But that is too wrong. That is too much for my taste. So we'll keep it down to about plus 48. Now let's move on to the whites here. We want to make the whites a little bit higher because we are going to be then lowering the blacks. Now, by lowering the black lever, you start to lose a little bit of the detail that you would see in the logs here. It, it sort of meshes everything together. But this is not about detail. This is just about the depth of field that I want to try and preserve. Now, this shot here, of course, the clarity being one of my favorite sliders, if you bring it up too much, it over accentuates everything. And I want to kind of keep it a little bit on the dreamy side and not so sharp and overly defined. Now, by making these modifications here, you already tell that the color, that the the the, the exposure of the color of the of the picture is over overly, you know, saturated. So we're going to come back to the come back down to the exposure and we just lower the exposure by two clicks. So it, now we're on minus 10. I, I'm just the reason why I, I usually come back to things. So I went I started from the exposure, I worked my way down, and then I eventually made my way to the exposure because it's, I, I just call it as I see it as I go down. So we can work, uh, come down now to the tone curve, which bring, gives us even more detail. And I want to raise up the highlights to make this even more defined, maybe lower the lights a little bit, the darks just a tiny tad bit, and the shadows... I would say if I keep it like this, it's it's a little bit too dark. But if you keep it like this, it gives it, if you raise up the shadows on the tone curve, it gives a little bit more uniform throughout here. And it because if I lower the shadows to here, it you can see all you see is black, 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 and black back here. And your eye, it just it all goes away from what I'm trying to you know, what I'm trying to transmit. So we're going to come up with that. And you see now it's more uniform. So it's more green, 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 green. This is green. That's green back there. And that looks much, much, much better. Now you can also, uh, by modifying the tone curve in here, you're basically just modifying what you just modified here. So, but you can regulate just a little bit more in each direction here on the bottom just to tone, just to, to, to curve it in a way that you actually want it to, how it would look best to you. And that's that's completely fine and completely acceptable. Now, what I want to do is I want to bring out the greens. I, the, the predominant pick, the color in this picture is green. I want to really pump that green into a more extreme green. So the hues here, so the hue which gives you the the shade of the color you're looking for. So the greens can be greener or they can be less greener. The reds can be even more red or less red. And that is what the hue does. And I just want to really pump the greens to give it that effect. I want, I'm separating the road with the fields around it and possibly the background. But the background, we'll get to that later and you will see exactly what will happen to the background. Now, I also, I can move a little bit on the yellows, maybe make the yellows a little bit more yellows, just like that, nice and rich, just the way that 
I think it should look. Now there's some colors on here that make a little little difference, little to no difference. The background, let's just keep it as much in the middle as possible. Yeah, okay, and the purples in the back. You see, that makes the background too colorful. That would look nice with the purple hue in the background, but it's bringing out too much of the detail here, and I kind of want to tone down on the detail of the background. So I'm just going to keep the purple the, the, the hue of the purple down so that the background doesn't start standing out. And we'll get to that in a second. So let us make the green, the saturation of the greens just nicely oversaturated. That is exactly how I want it to look. And that looks fantastic. I love the look of the picture. It is, it is becoming more and more dreamy. And that is fantastic. So I'm not really going to touch much of anything here. I'm maybe a little bit, whatever this is. Okay, so this is red. And it's a little bit too red. Maybe to make this a little bit more. That is nice. I want to change the overall tone of the, the temperature of the color. I want to make it a little bit more... Um, a little bit more afternoonish or early morningish, -ish, if you want. The thing is, if you if you go too cold, it looks like an Instagram filter that has gone wrong. But just make it a, just a pinch warm, not too much, just a little bit. This just a little tiny pinch. Now we can go down to the sharpening. I'm going to bring up the sharpening just a little bit, not too much, because this picture is already resolving a lot of detail. It is already, already a nice, nice picture. And we just want to raise the noise reduction not too much, keep it nice and sharp. And that is it from there. Now, when you're taking a picture that is this far out, you don't, you barely see any chromatic aberration or you barely see any fringing in the picture. But for the sake of it, we can always activate it. So if there are any little small artifacts, Lightroom will easily get rid of it. Now, the what I meant before about the background and everything else, I want to separate the picture here because I see layers here. I'm seeing different layers. There is this layer. This is one layer. This is the second layer, this whole middle part here with the grass, the lady, and everything else. And the third layer is this whole background, which I want to blur out a little bit more. And it's really easy to do in um, Lightroom by clicking on the graduated filter and just pulling that down just a little bit because you don't, you want it to be you want it to be as clear cut as possible. So the smaller this is, the more defined the separation will be. If you bring it up to here, let's see if I can show you with this mask overlay. If you bring it up to here, it's it's more smoother. It's a more smoother transition. So by bringing this down, it's clear cut into exactly what you want to make different, and actually generally makes things look better. So we are going to make it slightly smooth background here. And let us now sort of bring down the, the background, which is way too intense. So we want to keep the shapes there. We want to make it less blurry. We want to darken it up just a little bit, not too much. We bring the contrast down to really not make it so distracting. The shadows probably make it a little bit darker, so it just darkens up that whole area there. The clarity can well, the clarity might give us a little bit of a bring the saturation down a little bit. That looks good. What I'm gonna do now is there's only so much that you can do within the limits of this pick within the limits of this background. And if you want to make all these settings more accentuate, uh, like accentuate them, like give them even more power, you can click on, this is the, the, the part, the little dot here that you created this overlay. You can just click, right click on it and click on duplicate. And it makes a second one, which should even more define what is going on in the background. 
Now, if you leave it like that, it is a little bit too much of a clear, thick cut. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to select one. I'm going to bring it up just a little bit, maybe bring up the color because it's only modifying the color in one and not both. So just one, keep it the way it is. And the other one, just leave it. It's not a problem. So a little bit of more saturation. The exposure might be good. Maybe a little bit more of a, just bring it like that. And let's see how that looks. That looks much better. So it is darker. It is less sharp. It's not so sharp as what's going on in the middle. And it brings a clear division to the whole picture, to the whole com composition of the picture. And it actually looks really, really nice. You can see it's not distracting. You can clearly see what the background is here. You see the house is there, house is here, the trees, houses, and the, the row of trees back here in the mountain line behind it, or a hill, hilly side behind it. And it is not that distracting. It's really, really nice. Now I want to apply a third one. I want to apply, well, a second one, but I want to apply another one to actually take care of the area up to here. And this also, you have to just make sure it's facing the right way. And this, we will also modify just a little bit because we're going to be separating all layers in this pictures, in this picture. So we are going to be working on it as much as possible just to try and get get the the overall feel of the picture good i would say that looks that looks good now we are on for the third one which will cut this picture also just make sure that's in the right direction and we want to maybe bring down the the exposure just a, just a tad we will bring up the color a little bit see what happens when you bring down the sharpness it makes it even blurrier which actually for the sake of this picture is, is pretty much what I'm looking for um, what do we got here contrast now, if you make it too defined, it is more distracting. But if you bring the contrast down, it just sort of removes every every modification that we've done so far. And let's see how that looks. That looks great. That looks fantastic. Now we are back in the general modification. And we just bring up the overall exposure of the whole picture. Maybe bring down the shadows just a bit bump up the overall exposure just a little bit and I would say that looks good that looks really nice and we have divided the picture into we have multiple levels here we have the the blurry road in the beginning just smoothing out into sharpness here bringing this part of the picture into view and then just blurring out again as it goes up into into the into far away wherever it's there and we can actually see that by modifying the colors it's actually brought out you know the definition here it's actually made everything more defined and this looks fantastic i like the i like the composition of this picture um there's still something that is not really agreeing with maybe bringing down maybe bring down the contrast just a little bit now what I want to do now is I want to add just a finishing touch a vignette around and what the vignette does it makes this part here a little bit more of a mystery this whole you know, in the foreground here, it gives a little bit more of a, of a, it makes it mysterious. So you can see it, not see it. It really brings out the effect that I'm trying to obtain. And maybe 15 is a little bit too much. 10 looks perfect. 
and then we will go to the overall picture and just make it a few tads brighter and maybe lower the whites just a little bit. Another thing I want to do is, which I haven't really touched yet because I'm overall happy with the colors, but I, I like when the colors are nice and rich and they really bring out the presence of the picture. Like really, it, it just helps the picture stand out. And so I want to go on to the vibrance here and I'm going to bring up the vibrance, you know, in increments, increments of five until it gets to a point where the colors are nice and rich. And I would say at a plus 25, that looks really, really good. Really, really nice. Nice and rich. It really brings out the, 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 the green of the plants, of the crops. And it separates the greens and the yellows and the browns and the reds. And it does a fantastic job. That picture, just like that. Perfect. Perfect composition by using this Bernizier method. I honestly, I'm sorry. I don't know how to pronounce it correctly. I'm getting it wrong for sure. But that picture looks great. Guys, that is it for this video. That is it for this tutorial. If you have any questions, leave a comment below. I am more than happy to answer you. And do not forget to visit my website, techandpix.com. Of course, www.techandpix.com. And it is your one-stop shop for everything photography and technology. Guys, if you like this video, please don't forget to leave a thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel below for even more tutorials. I will try and crank out as many as I possibly can. And I just, I, I, I hope, I hope, I, I hope that any one of you can take away just a little bit something from this video. If the only thing you take away is maybe the, the, the usage of the graduated filters, but everything else you thought was, you know, bad, that is completely fine and it makes me more than happy. So guys, thank you for watching. I am Carl for Tech and Picks. Get out there and start snapping. I will see you next time.